Erev Tov Kharim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And tonight, a very controversial subject. Uh, I haven't quite really figured out exactly what I'm planning on naming this. But I am asking you, the listeners uh, tonight, to really take time to hear me out. And if you would, humor me a little bit. Because I realize that some of the things that I'll be speaking about tonight, they will affect many of the listeners right to the very core of uh, our belief system. Uh, of course, not our belief in Yeshua as far as Messiah. In fact, if anything, that is the most solid aspect of our uh, core beliefs is Jesus Christ. And um, I think now more than ever, the things that I'll be sharing with you tonight, we want to reevaluate our our love and commitment to Him, our uh, our soul, to make sure that our lives are confessed up and that everything is in order because we are moving into some very troublesome times ahead. And those times are not just merely coincidental. Those times are not just, uh, well, we have another uh, pandemic. We have earthquakes in diverse places, things like that. Those things are happening, and that is very true. But some of these things are orchestrated. Some of these things are subliminal programs that have been uh, put together in order to deceive the masses uh, while the plans are put into place for their New World Order system. A New World Order out of chaos, as it's been stated before. But that chaos is not so much the fighting that is going on on the earth all over the globe, uh, the overthrowing of the Middle East, uh, the wars down in the Sudan and all across uh, the Central Africa, the Congo, etc., or even the oddity that, that Israel, as we have stated to you not too, too long ago, just last year, as we shared with you that the Israeli government was looking more to China as the next world's superpower. There's a reason for all of these things, and you need to understand why those reasons are there and the intel that has been shared with me uh, that I have to kind of speak about in a roundabout way, uh, but that maybe will really help you as well. Uh, by the way, if you are on uh, our app program that we have, if you've ever downloaded that into your Apple or your Android onto your phone, uh, kind of like I've done on mine, which you can't really see it right now, um, I just wanted to bring this up to you before we get started here because we are going to start running live on the app. But the app that you may have already downloaded will need to be deleted and you will need to re-upload the app so that you can register to see the live broadcast that we do on our app. So if you have the, the app, which it doesn't show the, the little thing on there now, it's just where I registered myself as well. Uh, re-download the Israeli News Live app, and if you're having any trouble whatsoever downloading it, you can contact our webmaster at the following email address, login problems not working for me 2020 at gmail.com. And I'll put a, a link to that email address in there to our webmaster. Again, login problems not working for me 2020 at gmail.com and they will help you get that set up so you can see the broadcast live on your different mobile devices if you're not home. It's just a backup plan, doesn't cost you anything to do this, just a way for us to try to share the information with you. All right, very touchy subject tonight. And so I really ask, I have many friends with different beliefs all over the world. And so I'm asking those friends tonight to really bear with me uh, because I was trying to understand why are we in a situation where from China to the United States, uh, we now are dealing with what is announced by the U.S. as a, a, a pandemic of uh, this virus that is striking the entire uh, United States right now. Why are we preparing troops uh, that some of my other sources are telling me the all the reserves are being called up right now uh, to enforce a uh, quarantine, a mandatory quarantine across the nation. And uh, there's reasons for these things. A lot of those are very subliminal, but there are reasons for it. And you need to understand what's about to happen and why they are doing it. Now, some information I shared with you a little while back when we were talking about Nibiru. 
And I know my flat earth friends do not believe in Nibiru, at least from what I understand they don't. Maybe I misunderstood that. So if I misunderstand, please forgive me. And this is not to belittle flat earthers or, you know, they have some very valid reasons why they believe the way they do. But unfortunately, if you knew some of the things that I did, maybe it might make you think a little differently as well. And I'm not trying to take away from the, the research, the information, the apocrypha works, things like that, that that are out there. Everything has a purpose and a place. But what's about to take place on this earth, friends, really it calls for a time that we need to really pray and seek God more than we've ever done before. Seek salvation for your loved ones more than you have ever done before because we are moving into a very very sinister time ahead uh, the elite of this world have known about this but they're not going to tell you what i will tell you tonight they don't want you to know about it in fact in my opinion they want you to believe certain doctrinal ideas even including the nibiru doctrine i don't say that there's not a ninth planet out there all right, and I'm not going to say that my flat earth friends are wrong on their doctrine, but what I will tell you is what I do know and what the elites are preparing for because they know there is a major cataclysmic event coming to this earth and it is coming much faster and much sooner than any of us have ever thought. Now, when I say this, keep in mind, as also shared with me, that some of these same scientists believe these things would happen at other dates including the New Madrid fault line. There is scientists that believe by the end of 2020 that New Madrid fault line will erupt and will begin to crack up the earth. But information I'm sharing with you is one from one of the top scientists in the nation that work with many other scientists as well. And so I think it's time to take inventory and to understand what is really going on in this world today. Let's first start with the pandemic that we're facing now. This is partly a diversion, but it is true. There really is a pandemic. There really is a virus that is sweeping the world as we speak. There are people that are dying by the thousands. Is it more than from influenza or from other flu-like uh, illnesses that take thousands of life? I can't say yay or nay if that is the case. And is it man-made or is it a natural occurring virus, a new mutation? I will just leave that to your own imagination. I cannot comment on that issue. But I will tell you that while that we are dealing with a quarantine, this is when the nation will let out 5G technology across the entire nation. It will start off seemingly maybe as a good thing, facial recognition. One reason why France has the no covering your face law, with the exception, of course, of the coronavirus, right? Those things are going to change in our nation drastically. And as a result of these things that are happening and as a result of many more subliminal acts that will happen across this nation over the coming months there, it will be used to infringe upon your rights as American citizens under the Constitution. But then again, if you're under martial law, then you have no constitutional rights, do you? There is also the danger that people like ourselves face on a daily basis because we are willing to tell you the truth. Our entire Skype platform, for example, has been totally destroyed from within and, inter and e internally. Even tonight, as I tried to prepare this message here so you could see it on the screen, the strangest activities are happening like never before. The screen will just go to fuzzy like it's an old-timey TV or something. There's information they do not want you to hear, and they would like to do nothing more than to silence people like myself and like my wife. We live under a danger and a threat more than you could ever imagine to bring this information to you. And your kindness to our family and supporting this broadcast has been greatly appreciated. We try to warn you guys when we know things. Some things 
I can't go into every single detail, but what I will tell you tonight is very, very serious. I think more than ever in the age that we're living in now, and what I am really going to focus on more so than anything else from this day forward, after we make this broadcast, is going to be for the salvation of souls. That's one thing that the elitists are not really worried about in the first place. Because the elitists, they have their own Messiah coming. Their AI serpent Messiah. I'm not interested in some holy serpent that is going to be presented by the elitist rabbis of Israel. And by the way, as far as the third temple, it's already built. It's just underground, and it's underground for a reason. Just like the wars that are going on around the world and the struggles for certain areas of the world are going on, such as the Middle East, such as Africa, as I have pictured here, Russia based in Central Africa on the table while U.S. refocuses its strategy, or in the case here, China versus the U.S., struggle for Central Africa and the Congo. There are reasons for all these conflicts, even Hong Kong versus China. What's all the fighting about? Well, you might read this article, but it's not going to tell you what the real reasoning is about. And just like there's this big issue over, well, you have Nibiru coming. And everybody's afraid about Nibiru, but not my flat earth friends. Because what they believe, and they have very sufficient reasons for their beliefs, that this could not be true in the first place. At least if I understand that theory correctly. All right. And again, this is not a hit on flat earthers. So I beg you, my friends that believe this, do not take it that way. All right. But there is many more issues because Nibiru, like I said, is the least of your worries. You have to understand the government is in the business of disinformation. And I'm not here to say that flat earth is disinformation. I'm not here to say that Nibiru is disinformation. But they use different tactics, allow different things to get out there, and promote different ideologies out there because they want the people's minds to be focused on certain issues and certain events so that you will never pay attention to what is really going on. Okay? The Nibiru, though, as I said, is not the big issue. There is a thing that we called a meteorite belt. As it was said to me, that's the way you call it. So maybe there's something more to it in another realm of thinking that I don't understand. But that's really not the point. The point is, there are objects that are going to strike the Earth in the very near future. And it's actually in a near future in a way like you could never imagine. This whole thing that I shared with people a little while back when I was up there in Ohio at the, at the uh, conference that Paul put on about Planet X, when I brought in that little chip there from a scientist that had shared that with me, and this was a very sincere scientist. Now, I don't say he was an astrolog astronomer or, or anything like that, astrologist, whatever you want to call it. I forget the right terminologies for that, so forgive me if I'm saying the wrong words. Please take me for what my heart is trying to say here tonight to you. Uh, I think he's, uh, some people say that he was an astronomer. I don't say that he was an astronomer. He's definitely a very intelligent man. And I would say in his 70s, it shared that, that information with me. He had put in his information an estimated time of 2023. As far as Planet X goes, that is. Uh, and its arrival into our solar system. I know that there is also a uh, there is also another Chilean astronomer. Uh, I think that's the right word, the astronomer. Uh, and I forget his name off the top of my head, but he was the man that made it uh, made public on Chilean television that there was this, uh, as he called it, a comet planet that has an elliptical orbit. So there's been a lot of people that are believing these things to come, but even that is not the worst of what 
is anticipated in the very near future by the world powers and the world's elite. Because of the fact that I have a friend that is a scientist on the inside there that knows the things that are being prepared for and the plans that are being made from practically every level you can imagine, I'm able to share with you some very detailed information, but I'll have to kind of scave over the top. You know, you do have to protect your sources as well. The asteroid belt that we're going through, Jupiter, by the way, is actually probably the biggest friend to the planet, planet Earth right now. There are even scientists you can see online that would say that. They take the brunt of the largest rocks that are flying through space, especially through this belt that we're going through. I don't know if it's because of the size of the planet, because of the gravitational pull, etc., which again, I know many people would say there's no such thing as gravity, etc. But nonetheless, this is what's been explained to me. But one of the things, though, that is very troubling is the fact that there are other issues that are at play that are much more complex uh, than that. And this is some of the things that, uh, that has been shared with me uh, to begin with. All right. And the issues that, 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 uh, that we are looking at here, even before we deal with impacts of these meteorites, is that the Earth, because of the radiation that the Earth is taking in right now, the Earth is becoming like an egg that is in boiling water and it is starting to crack up the Earth. Billions of dollars was spent by governments around the world, including the United States, in order to build underground bunkers. And those bunkers is where they had planned to go when we go through this meteorite belt, not because of Nibiru, but because of the meteorite belt that they knew that the Earth would be going through travel, traveling in this, uh, as they describe it, like a spiral, spiraling thing, that is, everything is moving in that direction there. But the thing is, is we're about to enter into all this, but one thing scientists had not taken into consideration was the fact uh, that there were very um, complex issues with the radiation that we, that we would be going through uh, as well. And it's causing the Earth to actually heat up internally. And as a result of that, it is creating cracks within the Earth. Now, one such uh, idea of that is like this photograph right here that I can put on the screen for you here. Let me see if we can make that a little bit bigger for you so you can see that. This is where fresh water is just draining off into a huge crack in the Earth. And this is happening on a global scale. Because of the earth heating up within, the earth is cracking up. And now those, we don't even, these are not even doomsday's preppers. These are elitists that have built these billion dollar underground structures. They're very concerned if they'll even be safe on the inside of these when these meteorites begin to strike our earth. And in fact, uh, that is not the only issue that they're dealing with. They're also dealing with the fact that because of, uh, because of all the things that are happening, that we are going to suffer from earthquakes, wind problems, followed by, um, excuse me, that we're going to deal with earthquakes, volcanoes, floods, tornadoes, hurricanes, and winds of over 100 miles per hour. Because it's not a climate change as a result of CO2 emissions, as we're being told, but rather the Earth is uh, absorbing such a huge amount of radiation that the core of the Earth is heating up from within. This is what's going to be catastrophic for us here on the Earth. And we're going to face a lot of other issues before even dealing with these massive amount of asteroids that are coming. And the thing is, is once they come as well, there is very little hope of a survivability above ground with the, with the exception of multiple locations on the Earth. And that's what I want to show you. I want to first take you to the maps right here. Central Africa is considered by the scientists 
to be a safe zone. When I say a safe zone, why do I even say they know that there's a safe zone? From what I have been, uh, that's been shared with me, they're able to track about 80% of the rocks that are coming, that are going to hit the earth. 20% of them they cannot track. Either they don't see them yet, they're too small, they're too fast, too slow, they're traveling at different speeds. And the thing is, the earth is going to be pummeled by them. And some of them will be huge. The displacement of the oceans will be unheard of. And in fact, I was told that when they were first preparing for this, they did not consider the fact that, or did not know that they were going to be dealing with an issue that the earth would begin to heat up before this event takes place. And causing the cracks in the crevice of the earth, it is also causing it to be to where they're getting cracks within these bunkers and water is able to flow inside the bunkers now. So now the speculation of where is, where is the best place to be comes down to these places like Central Africa. Again, even though these are considered safe zones, they're not without their own probability of being hit directly as well, but not nearly as severe as the 80% of those rocks they know where they are. Another place that'll be a safe zone is the Middle East. Israel, Jordan, Syria, Western Syria specifically, okay? Those areas there. Another place that'll be safe as well is one other. Well, actually two other places, China. Central China to be exact. In fact, where all those ghost cities are, those are supposed to be some of the safe havens where the ghost cities are. Now, isn't it interesting that the United States, Russia, and Saudi Arabia, many other countries are all in a war to overtake Syria. And all the Syrian people have been forced out of Syria, pushed up into Turkey, and Turkey is working on pushing them all up into Europe. There's a reason for that. They know that Europe will be decimated by what's coming decimated so badly there won't be much left of Europe. So the elite want to get them out of that area. And so many of these people, including Turkey and Saudi Arabia, who are not in safe zones, they want to be able to move their elites up into Syria and up into Iraq and into Israel, etc. Israel wants to have a bigger buffer zone because after all, they're planning on having the new world order, the new world order out of chaos to reset up a global economic system. And since China, central China, is to, is to survive, it's one of the reasons why China has become the next global world power. I don't really know about Hong Kong, but I've wondered and speculated whether or not Beijing may not be in such a good place in the north because I hear the north of China is not that good. Maybe Beijing knows that Hong Kong is going to survive this very well. And that's why Beijing wants to get a hold of that. And Thailand actually, or Taiwan actually falls in an area that perhaps might survive to some degree as well. But as we've often heard too about the displacement of the oceans and what happens there, that's another big issue. And this is why, as we go back to Central Africa or the Middle East, we can look and see why Russia, China, the U.S., everybody is fighting over Central Africa. It's going to be the one of the few places on the planet that'll be still inhabitable to some degree. And according to what I was told as well, and we've heard so many of this, this information and probably made most famous of all, by none other than John Moore, is the United States. There's actually considered to be two states that are safe zones, Missouri and Nebraska. Isn't that kind of odd? Right dab slap in the middle of the United States. These are considered to be somewhat safe zones. But then again, it was shared with me a very interesting statement that I just will probably never forget as long as I live. If you live outside of those areas, say like where I am here in Orlando, and pretty much most other people on the earth, 
He said survival rate will be nearly no one. And of course, when the impact happens, as he stated, it'll be like the twinkling of an eye. Kind of reminds me of the words of Paul. We shall be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. Maybe God knows exactly what is coming, which I'm sure he does. It's not like maybe. We know that God knows what's coming. And that might be when a lot of his saints go home to be with the Lord. So needing to change location probably doesn't really matter at this point. What does matter is that our lives are in order with the Lord. And the time, even if you did decide you were going to try to relocate, is not much on our side now. As I was told, if you were going to bug out, you should be doing it right now. I was also told, and there again, this is all based on uh, a probability, not on exact facts. Three to six months is probably what we have left. But again, as also told, those dates still could be off. But the inevitable is still on its way. And you know, friends, as I look at these things here, the one thing that I cannot help but, but realize is that we have got to spend however many years we still have left on this earth getting the gospel out to the people, winning souls to Christ. While the elitists are trying to bring out the seven Noahide laws or trying to take away America's uh, constitutional rights, we have got to focus our efforts more than ever to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to every single person that we possibly can. Just as we've tried to say to people, you know, because we know that this lockdown is coming, stock up on some goods. You know this virus is here, get vitamin C. Now we need to get vitamin J. That's Jesus or Yeshua, vitamin Yod, if you want to say it like that, within our souls, and to share Him with everyone you possibly can. That's why I always say, you're not helping my people by going along and playing the Talmudic game. You want to help the Jewish people. Tell them about Jesus Christ. Tell them about the saving grace that He has shed His life, His blood. He shed His blood for all of mankind. There's nothing that matters more in this world today than that right there. And while we have time left, we'll need your help in doing so. And we appreciate your help, the kindness that you've shared, shown to my family. And again, who knows? Maybe there's more time. We don't really know. I don't have any dates or anything like that for you anything of that nature. All I can tell you is that we are living in a very serious hour and the elitists are on the move. That's what they have planned for us. And this whole thing about the seven Noahide laws, this is part of the New World Order plan. You have to understand, as it was said to me, there will still be many people that will survive when these events come on the earth. But the thing is, they would outnumber the elitists that are hiding, wherever they hide at, whether they're down in the Congo of Africa or whether or not they're in China or whether they're in Israel in the Middle East where they've done destroyed practically everybody there. They're still going to be places where they will be. The last thing they want is to face people that didn't have a place to go. They don't want to face them with all their Second Amendment rights packing along with them. So this is the reason why they're using clandestine means, subliminal means, to have an excuse to take away your constitutional rights. To justify it for whatever the means might be. Pandemic, or as it was said to me by my Israeli friend that uh, has the connections with the intelligence community, cause a problem in this country here where the people themselves will run out of their own ammo. I don't know exactly what their plan will be, but I know that there are many of them still yet to come. 
And we need to bind closer together, pray for one another, seek the face of the Lord Jesus more than we have ever sought him before. Focus our full efforts on the gospel of Jesus Christ right now. I want to go and really begin to examine the prophecies and share these things with you like never before. Because what I'm saying to you today, there's no sense in continually repeating this. Let's get down to the basics. Let's get down to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's get down to the winning of souls and doing everything we can to see our loved ones and our family members to come in. That's the most important thing we can do today. And putting aside all the different doctrinal views, different doctrinal issues, things like that, we don't need it. Okay? We don't need it. Whether we have the idea of it's Nibiru or whether or not we believe a flat earth, and, and don't condemn a brother or sister because they do believe that way. If they do, it's all right. Keep our focus on Jesus Christ. All right, keep our focus on him. He's the only one that matters whatsoever. All these things here, none of that matters. And I have here George Bush for you, just as a reminder of what he had to say, right? Listen to this. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be. When we are successful, and we will be. This is what's been going on. Besides conquering the different parts of the nation so that they will have their own little hiding place to go to, they're forging this new world order, setting up the infrastructure so that once we go through the cataclysmic events that we will go through, that they'll have everything in place. This will be when Christians will really face trials like never before. Because the Noahide laws, as you've heard very clearly from my wife and uh, from myself, from others as well uh, that have brought out this information, this is when you will see the beheading of Christians as idolaters, Hindus as idolaters. Other people in their different belief systems, those that do survive that are still here, this is when you will see these things. This is when you will see that Antichrist system set up. This is when you will see they will rule the world from the Middle East, from Israel. And they will say that their Messiah has come and saved them out of the calamity. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Thank you. Thank you for your help in this ministry. Thank you for your continued support. And we will do everything in our power to bring you the truth. Always. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. A very somber time, very somber hour. And thank you for, for having the patience and the love to bear with me because, like I said, I have many friends that have different views. And I really want to thank you for taking the time to listen to me. God bless you.